Now, Krista, I hear the word, the buzzwords decentralized, multi-stakeholder when referred to, or people referring to ICANN are members of Congress in the private sector as well referring to ICANN. Um, some disagree that maybe it's not so decentralized and maybe it's not so multi-stakeholder. Um, is there any uh, credence behind those comments about the concerns about ICANN? Um, sure. Let me first start by saying that I'm not an ITU expert. And I certainly applaud anybody in the private sector who's taken the time and energy to become one, because it's, it's not an easy task. Um, just the very organization, uh, the way that ITU is organized makes it very difficult for an outsider to participate or follow along, let alone actively participate. That being said, uh, I am, um, I do have extensive experience with the internet governance uh, multi-stakeholder model, or ICANN, and you know I, I certainly think that that is working well, and that um, additional internet, uh, excuse me, increased government interference would not be a good thing. To you know directly address your question, um, uh, decentralized is probably not the word I would use um, to describe it. I would say that the management of the internet addressing system. Is de isn't I wouldn't say that it's decentralized, but rather I'd say it's a multi-stakeholder model. Um, and you know, as far as um, you know, I, I take slight issue with um, the f the phrasing of uh, ICANN is running the show. Um, it's there's certainly stakeholders out there um, that that might say that. There's other stakeholders who would would say the exact opposite of that. M myself being one of them. Um, what I would argue is that the divergence of opinion here is actually indicative that the model is working. In this multi-stakeholder process, or model if you will, you have um, you know, constituencies that have strongly competing interests. And you know, what ends up happening is they, they all participate in this bottom-up consensus-based process. The output of that is a decision that everybody agrees with and, and can buy into, but they're not 100% happy. Now, ARI uh, Registry Services, as, as far as I know, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, is in support of Congress, uh, Congress's House Resolution 127, and I'm going to paraphrase this, and I'll put this up for our viewers as well. Uh, the Internet should be free of international regulation, and the United States government should remain committed to the current principles of a decentralized approach to web governance. Now, Carissa, our, our ARI Registry Services, rather, along with 27 other domain name industry representatives, wrote a letter to Congress late last year, I believe it was in December, uh, showing your support for ICANN and the GTLD program. Can you tell us more about that program? Sure. The, uh, the letter itself um, really addressed two separate issues. It addressed the new GTLD program, which is certainly something that we've all discussed, and um, by we, I mean the um, global community, if you will. Um, and the second point was really, our uh, second issue it was addressing was support of the ICANN model. On the first issue of the new GTLD program, um, I'm happy to discuss that with you, but I believe the second issue is probably more relevant to this conversation. So with respe respect to the support of the ICANN model and, and really the decision that came out um, of the ICANN model, which was to, to roll out this new GTLD program, um, the letter, we were trying to make clear to Congress that ICANN um, went through a clear open process to arrive at that decision about the new GTLD program, that um, not everybody was 100% happy, but to my earlier statement, that is a natural output of a multi-stakeholder process, is not everybody's 100% happy. And lastly, that um, um, it was a clear, rigorous, inclusive process, and so from my perspective and ARI Registry Services perspective, um, we wanted it to, to make clear to, um, to Congress that the process was followed and that we definitely supported the outcome.